The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 1532 in the name of Bill Kidd on Glasgow and Berlin's successful European Championships 2018. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Bill Kidd to open the debate. Mr Kidd, seven minutes or thereabout, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, today, I would like to bring the Glasgow 2018 European Championships forward for debate in the Scottish Parliament. The inaugural championships were based between Glasgow and Berlin from the 2nd to the 12th of August of this year. First of all, I'd like to congratulate all the medalists from whichever country they came, but with particular note to Scottish gold medalists Laura Muir, Ailish McCaughan, Grace Reid and Duncan Scott, and with further note to silver and bronze medalists James Wilby, Katie Archibald and Jack Carlin. This contributed towards Team GB and Northern Ireland ranking second place in the championships and winning the most medals overall. I'm sure these inaugural championships will be followed by many more and I hope that they return again soon to Scotland. The European Championships saw some of our best homegrown sporting talent perform on the world stage from occasions we all know, like the SSE Hydro, Strathclyde Country Park, Glen Eagles and Loch Lomond, as well as from newer debut locations uh, like the Glasgow BMX Centre in Knightswood, which I'll mention more than once. I am proud um, that I just throw, throw that in. I am proud that two of the venues used in the championships were based in my constituency of Glasgow Annie's Land. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the volunteers, including um, Lorraine Harper, who bought me a pint of beer on the basis I'd mention her name, and many of whom were my constituents involved in making the sporting events operate so well and efficiently. Their enthusiasm lifted the events and showed international visitors true Scottish spirit and a welcome to our country. I'm speaking here today because I want to highlight why international sporting events are good for Scotland and to encourage the people of Scotland to engage in the active legacy of these events by simply participating in sport going forward. From our sports, natural environment and rich culture, we have been able to showcase some of the best of Scotland to the world. At the same time, we have brought some of the best sporting talent of the world once again to Scotland. We are a nation with an international outlook. Sporting events such as the European Championships or looking back to 2014, the Commonwealth Games evidence this. These events are inherently good for Scotland. International sporting events build a legacy for our country in which we can all participate. They inspire us, they make us want to go further. And even examples like open water swimming in Loch Lomond can make maybe some of us want to explore the natural beauty of Scotland, which we all know and love in a new and daring way. Although I wouldn't necessarily take on Loch Lomond myself, I have been inspired by these events and I hope my colleagues here in the chamber and the people of Scotland are too. Looking at the facts, I can see that there is a shared response since the Commonwealth Games. There has been an upward trend in sport participation and positive impact can be seen today. Scottish Athletics, the National Governing Board for Athletics in Scotland, with approximately 150 athletic clubs across the country, recently reported a 10% increase in athletic club membership. There has also been a surge in cycling. This has been highlighted by the 21% rise in Scottish cycling memberships. Organisations such as Sustrans, which was recently awarded £27 million in Scottish Government funding, has helped pave the way for cycle-friendly cities and also provide route maps for exploring the whole of Scotland. This country has a lot to offer. We are blessed with our natural landscape, which offers bountiful opportunities for mountain walking, biking, hiking, bouldering, and shinty playing. If you can't yet embrace swimming the length of Loch Lomond, you could at least try kayaking or sailing there. Perhaps you could explore the hidden gems and beautiful beaches that can be found across Scotland's 10,000 kilometres of coastline. Now, due to major international sporting events leaving their footsteps in new venues, there is a growing number of world-class sports centres available for our constituents to enjoy. Not only do we have Europe's largest climbing centre, the EICA in Ratho, outside of Edinburgh, 
We now have the Glasgow BMX Centre in Knightswood, part of my constituency, mentioned for the third time. So I think they are due me a wee training run on the BMX bikes. The BMX Centre in Knightswood, five times, is a good example of the active legacy which comes directly from last month's European Championships. The creation of a facility for this budding sport, which was officially adopted by the Olympics in 2008, provides essential space to allow development of new skills for a sport which is now extremely popular among young adults. The Glasgow BMX Centre was purpose-built last year and it now makes Glasgow the only city in the world with venues capable of hosting all four Olympic cycling discipline events, BMX, mountain biking, road and track. The centre will also be the new home of Western Titans BMX Club as it relocates from Clyde Bank. Another direct active legacy from the European Championships is the half million pounds announced by the Scottish Government earlier this year for Sports Scotland to build upon the momentum of Glasgow 2018. This funding will be, eased, will be invested in Sports Scotland's community sports hubs to offer easily accessible venues throughout the country. What I would suggest as a final note is to get inspired, get involved, try a new sport, join a club or simply go for a walk in our beautiful countryside. Everything is open to you in Scotland. Let's use it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Sandra White to be followed by Brian Whittle. Miss White, please. Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer. Uh, thank Bill Kidd also for securing this debate. And I also thank very much and congratulate the many people who worked so hard and tirelessly uh, to deliver these events. I really welcome the debate. Obviously, the European uh, Championships were held in Glasgow and particularly the city centre area, which was absolutely buzzing, uh, is a word that I will use quite often, I think. And the reason I, I, I say this about the city centre, having gone through some quite major events in Glasgow and in the city centre, it was... Uh, great to have the championships there uh, so that the Glaswegians and the rest of Scotland can actually get the chance to celebrate and showcase our amazing talents. It was a great time to, to have it, the culture and of course our largest city in Gla uh, Scotland and Glasgow Kelvin, my constituency, played a really great part in it. Uh, I know that Bill Kidd has mentioned about Berlin and Glasgow. I just want to mention the fact that uh, about the existing European Championships, athletics, aquatics, cycling, gymnastic, rowing, triathlon, and the new golf team championships as well. It's all quite breathtaking, and uh, it would be good if you could include some of us having actually entered into this. All I can say is I went along to some of the events, and it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, people welcomed with open arms. There was also numerous other sporting venues, uh, aquatic cycling and rowing, triathlon, and obviously Berlin hold, hosted the athletics. And there's 4,500 athletes competing quite, quite a number. And we look at the, the situation in Glasgow. Glasgow is currently ranked number five in the world in the Sports Business Ultimate Sports City Awards. It is also the number one city in the world in the legacy category of SBUSCA in reflection of its outstanding and long-standing commitment to increasing participation, as Bill Kidd has already mentioned, and creating new sporting opportunities for citizens. Uh, basically, that started off in the lead up to the 2014 uh, Commonwealth Games. And I want to come back to the issue of legacy uh, just uh, when I'm finishing up. We mentioned, obviously, the people who had arranged this but uh, special thanks must go also to the, the, the many, the thousands of uh, volunteers. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the Championship Volunteers Team 2018. They were described as the welcoming smile, the selfie taker, the tourist guide, the comedian, the high five expert, and the person to have a wee blurry, uh, above all, the heart and soul of our championships. I know many of them personally, and they did a fantastic job when you think that the overall attendance was half a million, basically double what was projected before the championships even began. So I think that's fantastic. I just want to come back to the legacy. Now, if you look at Glasgow's iconic George Square, and it was central to the festival 2018, which ran alongside the 2018 European Championships. And it really did uh, create a fantastic carnival atmosphere. And I know that uh, the Cabinet Secretary was there as well. Uh, it was great. People could come from all over and enjoy this fabulous big party. 
in George Square. Part for spectacular lineups and events. It was open to all and it was fantastic. But one of the issues that came up after that was the fact that George Square was closed to all traffic and it was fantastic. And people started to think, I wonder if we could have it permanently closed to traffic. And that is part of their legacy, which Glasgow City Council have actually put a consultation out. So basically, if that came about, the legacy of these games would be we would have a traffic-free George Square, if that's what the people want. So I just would like to encourage all the Glaswegians to take part in the consultation. It's on Glasgow City's website, and that and something given back to the city would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much, President Officer. Thank you, Ms. White. I call Brian Whittle to be followed by James Kelly. Mr. Whittle, please. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I uh, add my thanks to uh, Bill Kidd for securing time in the Chamber to debate uh, and discuss the European Championships uh, recently held in Glasgow and in Berlin. And this is the first time that the European Championships have, have been uh, a multi-sport championships. Uh, it's a move that I very much uh, welcome. Uh, you'll not be surprised here. I have a bit of a, a soft spot for the European Championships. Um, I, and I think I, I, would, I would have appreciated back then this, the opportunity to have other sports. I mean, back then it was, it was just the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games. So I think um, bringing a lot of sports together, I think is always going to, to, to be uh, a, a great for the athletes in the village and also for the crowds and supporters who come along to watch. And uh, it's, it's difficult to get all, the, all these sports into to one place. It's difficult to find venues where we can bring all the sports to one place. And I think in, the, in this particular instance, uh, uh, track and field uh, ended up in Berlin because to, to, to host track and field and to host all the, all the different sports, we need these big stadiums and, and uh, 40,000 plus stadiums for track and field that are, are, are few and far between. But I think that um, it gave me the opportunity to go and watch uh, other sports. I, I, was, I went to Toll Cross uh, to watch the swimming championships, which was, it, it was just absolutely uh, phenomenal. Uh, I went to George Square uh, to watch the cycling. It didn't take me long, neither they went. And uh, that was my cycling. Uh, but uh, I, I, again, the, the, the city was uh, incredibly vibrant, incredibly welcoming. Um, and I think one thing's for sure. We can, we can quite easily say that we are, we are world class at hosting and supporting uh, uh, sports events. I think it's a great pride that we should have uh, as Scots in which we welcome people uh, to our country and the way in which, as, as Sandra Frank alluded to, that the, the volunteers flock to help and the way they went about their business. So there's no doubt that we have world-class facilities, uh, also building on that legacy uh, of the Commonwealth Games in 2014. Now, it's not only the fact that the Euros uh, are a multi, were a multi-sport uh, this year that made them unique. We are only four years on from the last time we had a multi-sports event take place here in Scotland. And that gives us an opportunity to, to look, look at legacy, to review the class of 2014 and see what has changed and what has, has developed. Now we have, without question, we have world-class performers. And we had 47 Scots in, in the GB team across seven sports and the medals came, came for those Scots. Now, I unashamedly massive big fan of, of Laura Muir and she underlined, underlined her huge uh, huge talent uh, uh, for dominant performance in winning her first uh, uh, outdoor title. Uh, and I would like to say that she, I, I take my training squad along uh, now and again to uh, the indoor facility uh, in Glasgow at the Emirates there and she, where she trains often and she always takes the time out to speak to I've got a little group of 10 year olds that I work with. She always takes time after training to go along and speak to them. So uh, I, I think that she's, she's a model. Uh, of how uh, international sports people should be. Elise McCoggan uh, won a fantastic silver in the 5K and uh, following on from, uh, uh, from her mother and her mother's footsteps. And she's actually very close to her mother's times uh, and, and, and let's hope that she emulates her. I want to make a special mention to Ailey Doyle who once again made her way onto the podium. And I think that is now her sitting at 18 uh, major medals, the most by any, any Scottish athlete. And, and in that uh, four before team, also, young Zoe Clark, who I had the, 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 the pleasure of working with as an under-15 and an under-17. Um, Duncan Scott and his three gold medals uh, and a silver in the pool, which I went into some of that. And I think I did mention uh, after the Commonwealth, watch out for Jake Whiteman. And uh, he, he's, he's got a fantastic future ahead of him. And he took a bronze medal in there. 
Um, now, what I wanted to highlight, uh, actually, is in the time, oh, I'm at four minutes already, and I've got halfway through my flipping speech. I just wanted to say that the, the journey that the world-class athletes uh, have been on, and to thank uh, uh, the clubs, the national governing bodies, the coaches, and the funding from local, uh, from, from, from early on and, and locally, to the funding that goes through Sports Scotland, until they reach that elite funding uh, uh, at UK sport level, uh, and that's a sort of 13.2 million pounds into the Scottish elite sport at the highest levels of sport. And these, these, are, these are fantastic successes. And I just want to say, may it long continue. May we continue to, to bring uh, elite sporting events to Scotland and hope that that inspires the next generation. Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you, Mr Whittle. I call James Kelly to be followed by uh, Annie Wells, the last speaker. Mr Kelly, please. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Like the other speakers, can I place on my record my thanks to Bill Kidd for bringing this debate forward tonight. Uh, I think it's right in the first week back that we, we do use some time to reflect back on the success of the championships because we had a, a couple of debates in the run into the championships and we discussed a lot of the issues uh, around them and there was a lot of hope and optimism but there was also some discussion around um, legacy so I think although there's a members debate it's, it's right to, to take this time to reflect back on the, the championships that were recently held. I want to place on record my thanks to all the, to the organisers and all the volunteers um, who it wouldn't have been possible for the, the championships to be even be held, never be, mine be such a success uh, if it hadn't been for so many volunteers. It was quite a kind of striking image in the, the run-in, the few days run into the events that people started to crop up around Glasgow with their their tracksuits on, proudly wearing them, the, the volunteers. And if you met them in the street, they were delighted to tell you where they, where they, were, the, they were volunteering that. I met one woman in a street near to me who was, was working at, at Toll Cross, and she, she told me all about her day and, and how much she enjoyed it. And you could see how much uh, that woman got out of it, but you can see how they all got a lot out of it, and they put a lot into it, so we should be thankful of that. Um, I want to congratulate all the, the medal winners. The, the motion's right to highlight um, Berlin, Berlin as, as well as Glasgow. Uh, and I, I want to uh, reiterate what Brian Whittle said about Laura Muir. I thought that was a fantastic performance. And it was really great to see Laura Muir strike the front from so far out in that 1500 metres race. Sometimes these races can be tactical in nature and people you know, wait until the last couple of hundred metres. Um, but she had a really gutsy performance, went right to the front from a, a long way out and just took it on and, uh, and won comfortable in the end. So that was a fantastic performance. I also want to highlight uh, Kirsty O'Brien, who's a member of Canvas Lang Harriers and got a, a silver medal in the, the triathlon uh, for the, the over 35 group at Strathclyde Park. And that sets an example, not just to those in Canvas Lang Harriers, but throughout the Canvas Lang in, in Glasgow uh, region. I think the uh, Glasgow itself really done, its, done itself proud. As Sandra White said, uh, the crowds way um, outweighed what we expected. There was, you know, a fantastic atmosphere when you went into to the city at night or you went in to take on uh, any of the events. Um, like Brian Whittle, I, I took in the, the cycling at Glasgow Green. Um, and what really struck me about it, going to it, was the, the sheer endeavour of the athletes. Um, I decided to try and enter into the spirit of it, uh, you know, be, uh, in terms of some sport and participation. I always go out a run on a Sunday morning. So what I did was I ran, I watched the start of the cycling, which starts at half past ten in the, the Sunday morning. I ran from Cambus Lang into Glasgow Green, which is about four miles. I watched a good bit of the cycling. And then I ran back uh, home about half past two and I watched the finish at half past four. So it was six hours that cycle race was on. And it was that, that was in the, the kind of final Sunday. The weather was good throughout, but on that occasion, it was pouring with rain. And it was astonishing to see that, you know, the, as they came round lap after lap, you know, the effort that they were putting in. But you could also see how much the crowds were getting out of that. So uh, in summing up, Deputy President Officer, it's been a... It's been a great event, a great success. Uh, I think it is very important that we look at the, the legacy. Um, you know, there are there remain challenges in Glasgow in terms of 
the city's health, uh, you know, life expectancy and, and uh, illnesses remain a major challenge, but I think the platform that the European Championship gives us in order to try and get more people into sport is an opportunity uh, which we should all promote and unite around. Thank you very much. I call Annie Wells. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank you to Bill Kidd for bringing this to the Chamber this evening. Um, no one was more excited to hear that Glasgow was once again hosting a major sporting event this summer than me. Unfortunately, I was on holiday for the whole lot of it and didn't get to see it. Um, but it was continuing success of the 2014 Commonwealth Games. And the European Championships again caught the spirit of the city, showcasing Glasgow's infamous hospitality and the warmth of its people. As the host of the first ever European Championships, Glasgow again opened its doors to sporting fans from across the world, joined, jointly hosted by Glasgow and Berlin between the 2nd and 5th of August. The new multi-sport event was the amalgamation of several existing championships, with Glasgow leading the way in aquatics, cycling, gymnastics, rowing and the triathlon. Thousands of visitors came to the city during August, and with blanket coverage by the BBC and other major broadcasters in Europe, it's estimated the TV audience reach exceeded a billion viewers. In reflecting on the success of the championships, it's clear to see that Glasgow once again was the perfect host. With a buzz in the city and an atmosphere of friendliness and goodwill, the event provided perfect opportunity for everyone to get involved. And as well as the four and a half thousand athletes competing from 52 countries, thousands of volunteers from across the world took part in helping out including representatives from every Scottish local authority. Music, art, dance, theatre and comedy events were going in conjunction with the championship and this added a carnival atmosphere to the occasion, providing the opportunity for Glasgow to showcase its creative culture and bring together communities. And to top it all off, Britain came second overall behind Russia on the overall medal table with Scottish athletes winning 20 of the 74 Team GB's medals. With Scottish tourism worth more than £11 billion to the economy, the championships will no doubt give a boost to the country's vis visitors' economy. Visit Scotland spoke of the role of the event would play in providing a platform to showcase what Scotland has to offer, attracting tourists to visit Glasgow's historical and contemporary cityscapes and the beautiful and dramatic landscapes that surround it. As Scotland's largest city, Glasgow has so much to offer, and I'm extremely pleased to see that due to events like this, in, in time will be rightly recognised as one of Europe's most exciting destinations to visit. And finally, as with all sporting events, I hope to see that the Championships will increase Scotland's worldwide sporting reputation and encourage people to take part in more physical activity, including myself. Um, and as I've already mentioned, with Scotland winning over 25% 20, of Team GP's total medal tally, Scotland is doing amazing in these sports, and it's something we need to, to milk for all it's worth. We are doing great in terms of the elite sports, and there's no doubt about it, but this is something that needs to filter down to everyone in Scotland. So regular sport and activity for all levels becomes a societal norm. With regards to that, I would like to take the opportunity to ask the Scottish Government what fresh approaches it will take to tackle Scotland's obesity crisis and improving current rates of physical activity. And to finish today, Deputy Presiding Officer, I'd again like to congratulate Glasgow on its impressive hosting of the inaugural European Championships. What has been shown time and time again during the hosting of sporting events is that they are, tight, they are time when people can come together and celebrate in unity. Glasgow has so much to offer, and again, we've seen this. The championships have not only consolidated Scotland and Glasgow's sporting reputation worldwide, but most importantly, they showcased Glasgow and Scotland's best asset, its people. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call on Fiona Hislop to close for the Government. Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I also thank Bill Kidd for securing this debate and giving us the opportunity to reflect, to reflect on the fantastic achievement of the first ever multi-sport European Championships event to be held and, of course, jointly hosted by Glasgow and Berlin this summer. 
Members who have contributed have paid tribute to all those who have made this happen. I want to add my voice to congratulate the athletes who took part in this thrilling competition, in particular Team GB in Northern Ireland for coming second in the medal table, uh, and all the Scottish athletes uh, in securing an impressive 23 medals. My particular highlights were seeing the power of Duncan Scott in the pool and obviously that uh, great achievement by Laura Muir on the 1500 metres track. Thanks to all the officers and the delivery team of the 2018 European Championships, the local authorities, Glasgow, Edinburgh, Perth and Kinross, North Lanarkshire, Eastern Bartonshire, Stirlingshire, and of course Glasgow Life, Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park, and our own Scottish Government officials. And I want to put on record my thanks to Aileen Campbell, the former Sports Minister, for her contribution to this event. And of course, as we've heard, the amazing committed 3,500 volunteers really brought energy and enthusiasm and welcome to the event. And everyone remarked what an impact they made, both to the professionalism of the event, but also the spirit of the championships. We should not underestimate what an innovation the European Championships were. This was the first ever multi-sport event uh, on a European Championship level. And it was far from clear from the outset what the response would be. This was a bold and courageous step by everybody involved. Glasgow saw 88% of ticketing and attendance. Uh, viewers in 10 major European markets saw a staggering 567 million hours of viewing. And the BBC alone reported 20 million viewers with a peak of 6.4 million. The Scottish Government was the main funder for this event in Glasgow in partnership with Glasgow City Council. But the vision of those involved in the various European sporting federations and the European Broadcasting Union themselves must be congratulated. Uh, we think our politics is tough, but imagine trying to bring seven different governing bodies together to make sure that this happened. That was a major achievement itself. It was innovative as a concept. It was initially thought of some years ago, but it, it has effectively broken the mold of international championships. The intention is that this new multi-sport European Championship will now take place every four years between the Olympic competitions. Aquatics, athletics, cycling, gymnastics, rowing and triathlon federations came together with the addition of a golfing event. And the European federations I spoke to at the various events I attended were all very positive about the hosting and also the commitment of the Scottish Government ministers and the city leaders in their attendance and their support. And we were able to build on our relationships with Berlin following the opening of the Scottish Hub uh, earlier this year. And the Championships has helped facilitate the Chamber of Commerce relationship between Glasgow and Berlin. And the Minister for Europe, Ben McPherson, attended events around the athletics in Berlin. And I was delighted to welcome the Berlin delegation to Scotland. So this new event has proven to be a huge success, a celebration of quality sport and athleticism with an outstanding cultural programme, also Festival 2018, which was enjoyed across Europe and beyond. And the event showcased our world-class venues, our capability to sustainably host sporting events based on existing and appropriate new infrastructure. The only entirely new venue was for BMX uh, at Knightswood. And that new track, as Bill Kidd has, has outlined, um, is the only outdoor championships and Olympic standard track in Scotland. It will be home to Glasgow's Western Titans BMX Club, providing a lasting legacy for BMX in Scotland. It is truly world class, and I was told it's one of the few um, venues in the world that meets the latest competition regulations. So we should expect BMX champions from across the world to come and train in Scotland. Investment in the rowing tower at Strathclyde Country Park also equips this as a world-class venue and hosting the event at venues across the country allowed us to spread the benefits to communities around Scotland. And of course, broadcasters believed in the concept from the start and I think the way it was presented, uh, some people said they didn't know quite what was in Berlin and what was happening in Glasgow, but it was very slick because it allowed uh, the interchange and I, I think a very efficient and effective and entertaining programming. Images were beamed across the world and up to 12 hours per day of coverage on free-to-air channels showcasing Scotland's unique culture and attractions alongside the sport. So we had backdrops of George Square, Loch Lomond, Strathclyde Country Park, together with golf from Glen Eagles and diving from Edinburgh. And it highlighted the very best of Scotland uh, and added immeasurably to the profile and the reach of our new and hugely exciting Scotland um, is now brand. 
And the championships weren't just about sport. That festival 2018 highlighted Scotland's reputation for cultural brilliance and creativity. And the live orchestral link-up between the Royal Conservatoire and the musicians from Berlin's renowned, renowned Arts University was a real highlight and a first for both institutions. Of course, we should also pay tribute to those that were involved in, in transport. A successful transport operation is critical for any event. 12 venues spread across Scotland with over 8,500 athletes and officials accommodated in over 60 locations. Transport Scotland's knowledge and expertise was put to good effect and good communications and planning were key. The Scottish Government is committed to ensuring a sustainable national legacy from hosting major events and sustaining a flourishing, innovative and competitive events industry generates businesses, creates jobs and provides a legacy that benefits all of Scotland's communities. There are a range of things that I've covered today, but of course, of one of those um, aspects is highlighting Scotland as a dynamic, outward-looking and inclusive European nation. And the Scottish Government put a particular emphasis on using sporting legacy to increase physical activity levels. There should be no barrier to, barrier to participating in sport or improving your health and lifestyle, uh, whoever you are and whatever your background. So to support this, with Glasgow City Council, we invested £1 million to harness the profile of the championships. From this, Sports Scotland distributed 500,000 to community sports hubs. Spread right across Scotland, these hubs play an essential role in delivering grassroots sport and activity, which we know provides the foundation for a better health for all, as well as providing for future sporting success. £500,000 was invested at Glow Live at the Green and this offered 11 days of free activity and more than 120,000 people visited the site. So that venue was packed with sport, fitness, lifestyle education, opportunities and signposting in order to promote health and well-being. But looking forward, presiding officer, we must build on the triumph for these championships and look to the future. Next year, Scotland plays host to European short course swimming and European indoor athletics and, of course, the Solheim Cup. And the reputation Scotland has developed as a host of world-class events brings opportunities for international promotion and the business, of course, it brings to our economy. And we can't take that for granted. We constantly need to look for and plan for new events and opportunities. And that's a key role for our very respected organisation, Event Scotland, and I want to pay tribute to their role in the European Championships as well. It helps us promote our stunning landscapes, our exciting cities, the contribution of our young people, and of course, our diverse uh, communities. Our future events will look to use those world-class skills and expertise we have developed to build further. And of course, presiding officer, as Bill Kidd has said in his motion, with the 2018 European Championships, Glasgow and Berlin, Berlin have set a high bar. And I hope everyone will enjoy, uh, join me in congratulating all those involved in developing and delivering this groundbreaking event. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.